Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very interesting trigonometric equation. Now we have tangent 1 over x equals 1 over tangent x. I don't think this problem has been solved on any other channel. I haven't seen it on YouTube. So this is probably the first time. Anyways, so we could call it homemade in that sense. All right, cool. So we have this type of equation where we have an interesting situation. So you have an angle and then you take the reciprocal and then tan it and then it just becomes the reciprocal of the tan. So the tan of the reciprocal is the reciprocal of the tan. Okay, so that's a type of relationship. And hopefully you'll be surprised with the solution. I'll show you the solution and also a graph. Okay, a very interesting graph. So let's get started. We have tangent 1 over x equals 1 over tangent x. So let's go ahead and do the following. I can write the 1 over tangent x as cotangent x, which is the reciprocal of tangent x, which is also a co-function for tangent. And then cotangent and tangent are co-functions. And what happens is if two angles are complementary, which means uh, their sum is 90 degrees or pi over 2 radians, then one of the tangents is equal to the other cotangent. So in other words, if alpha plus beta is 90, then tangent alpha is the same as cotangent beta. Okay? All right, cool. So we can write the cotangent x as tangent pi over 2 minus x, which means uh, I'm setting the cotangent of x equal to the tangent of the complement of x. So x and pi over 2 minus x are complementary angles. Make sense? Because their sum is pi over 2. Cool. Now, we have the two tangents that are equal to each other. And remember how you solve these kinds of equations. If you tangent alpha is equal to tangent beta, then this implies alpha equals beta plus n times pi, where n is an integer. Make sense? Because the period for the tangent function is pi. Uh, unlike ten, uh, cosine and sine, you don't need two separate solutions. Okay? Cool, cool. Now let's go ahead and use that property, but let me rewrite the final result. So we got tangent 1 over x equals tangent pi over 2 minus x, which was the same thing as cotangent x, which was the same thing as 1 over tangent x. So far, so good? All right, let's continue. Now, from this formula, equation, whatever you want to call it, we can safely say that 1 over x equals, this is the critical part, make no mistake, pi over 2 minus x plus n times pi, where n is an integer. Needless to say, because I said it once, right? Okay, cool. Now, my goal is to solve for x, right? So let's put all the x's on the same side, x plus 1 over x equals pi over 2 plus n pi. Now, I, at this point, I want to say something. x plus 1 over x is a special type of expression. You've probably seen quite a few problems that deal with this type of expression uh, from a polynomial uh, standpoint. But in this case, uh, we are kind of dealing with a trigonometric situation, and, but we still got to solve for x. So do we always have a solution? So that's, that's one of the questions you should be asking. Do we have solutions for all n values, which is something we're going to explore a little later. But let me just tell you this. If x is positive, if x is positive, then x plus 1 over x from a m g m inequality needs to be greater than or equal to 2. Think about it. If they're both equal, like if they're both equal to 1, then 1 plus 1 is 2. If x is greater than 1, uh, obviously 1 over x is going to be less than 1, but uh, something like, let's say, 1.5. 1 over 1.5 plus 1.5 is going to be greater than or equal to 2. So no matter which values you use, you can prove this using AMGM. This is going to be satisfied. But if x is negative, that's a different story. Anyways, let's leave it at that and try to solve this equation. How do you solve this equation? Well, you can turn it into a quadratic. How do you turn it into a quadratic? Multiply both sides by x x squared plus 1 equals pi over 2 plus n pi. The whole thing will be multiplied by x. And guess what? Let's put everything on the same side so that we can make it a full quadratic and solve 
by using the quadratic formula. If you want to complete the square, you can, but nah, I wouldn't do it. It doesn't look very nice. And factoring is definitely out. So x, by using the quadratic formula, is negative b. Negative b is basically the opposite of the coefficient of x, which is in this case pi over 2 plus n pi. And then plus minus the square root of, right? Remember the formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. That is the quadratic formula. Hopefully you memorized it. Okay? Inside b squared. So we're going to square. And by the way, b squared and negative b squared doesn't matter. It's the same thing. So you might as well just use the positive version. Minus 4ac. C is 1. So it's going to be minus 4. And the whole thing is going to be divided by 2a, which is 2. Great, that was easy. Okay, cool, cool. Now, if this looks good to you, you can leave it at that, but I'm going to explore a little bit further. Okay? And, of course, I'm also going to show you a graph at the end. So, let's look at some special values. What happens if n is 0? Obviously, that's one of the things you should check first because n equals 0 is so special. First of all, it allows you to get rid of the additional pi, and it greatly simplifies the problem. Okay, let's see what happens. If n is 0, then x equals pi over 2 plus minus the square root of pi over 2 squared minus 4 divided by 2. So this might look good to you, but it doesn't look good to me. Let me tell you why. Pi over 2 so pi is less than 4, right? You would agree, hopefully. It's 3.14. And trust me, I only memorized the two digits of pi. A lot of people memorize 100 digits. And I know we've done some pi recitation contests in the past when I was teaching. And some students memorized it. Anyways. So since pi is less than 4, pi over 2 would be less than 2. And if you square pi over 2, its square would be 4. I mean less than 4, sorry. What is that supposed to mean? It means if you subtract 4 from both sides of this inequality, you're going to get a negative answer. Uh-oh, our discriminant is discriminant, is negative. That's not good because you're not going to get real solutions. So if n is equal to 0, you get no real solutions from here. Can you find complex solutions? Absolutely. How do you find them? You can basically find them like this. You negate the inside because that's going to be a positive version. In other words, like absolute value. And then multiply by i on the outside and you're good to go. All right? So these are going to be complex solutions. But what if n does not equal 0? Any other integer, I think it should be good. Right? If you think about it, like if n is equal to negative 1, pi over 2 minus pi, well, that's not going to be good either, right? So anyways, for some values, you don't have real solutions. Sometimes you do have real solutions. Let me also give you another real uh, special case. If n is equal to 1, then x is going to be 3 pi over 2 plus minus the square root of 3 pi over 2 squared minus 4, which is definitely positive, over 2. And these are going to be actually this because there are two values. These are going to be approximately 4.489 or 2 point, I mean 0 0.223. And you, hopefully you're going to see these on the graph. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we'll finish up. The graph of y equals tangent 1 over x. Okay, this is going to be a super duper crazy graph. You see the oscillations, very many oscillations around 0 because as x approaches 0 from the right and from the left, 1 over x is going to approach infinity, positive and negative infinity, and the tangent values are just going to be off the chart, right? So that's going to be kind of crazy. But notice that we have some nice intersection points, which are actually solutions to this equation. And this brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.